I am Blaze Bailey. You are experiencing probably the best show in the world, Puppets Corner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, an, another edition of Poppet's Corner. I, this is a very special honor for me and Pops here. Yeah. Um, because father, son. Father, son, that's right. Because we would listen to this gentleman right in front of me um, for, God, I think, you know, close to 15 years now, uh, where I would uh, have the uh, cassette player in... Uh, with the manic metal cassettes and and uh, kick you in the face was the song that would always fucking play on it and that song fucking rules and so does this gentleman M- ladies and gentlemen mr diego from uh from mx machine welcome hi how you doing i'm good thank you for having me of Both course yeah, this, is great. this is great of course yeah, very make humble. sure to talk into thank the you. microphone so we so, can hear you thank yeah. you i still i still uh made you a promise outside when i track it down we're gonna find some of the promos for yeah mx machine yeah we used to we used to make our own ads for mx machine uh for the gigs on kdc and we used to buy ad space and they were pretty funny because we used to produce them ourselves and and uh they but they were, wanted you to they buy were rather comical so, you so had to pay for ad space on sure them? oh yeah and absolutely. was that an investing in absolutely yeah because it's going to pay off in the absolutely long run. okay absolutely you know we we are you know in back in the day you you have to in any business if you want to succeed you have to invest at the time that was going on was the market saturated with bands do you think and that's why it was it was getting saturated uh we were in la we were signed to restless enigma uh it was uh it was a, a an amazing era uh, uh amazing opportunity that we we saw uh growing up in the circle that that we did we, we were surrounded by uh by amazing individuals and talented motherfuckers and and we followed suit you know, we grew up with uh, the new wave of British heavy metal, listening to all the music that inspired us. Um, we used to spend um, our, our uh, afternoons and evenings uh, smoking bowls in John Bush's garage, listening to all the heavy metal that he used to spin on, our, uh, on his record player for us, and, and it, it, it greatly inspired us. So, so um, uh, we're definitely blessed to, to have... Uh, been in the right place at the right time, you know, in this scene. I like it, man. So tell me a little bit about um, how MX Machine actually got started. Um, MX Machine started as a concept in my head. We, we all, everybody here, I'm, I'm also with Angelo Valdespino here, uh, the other, uh, another legendary yes, gentleman. And, yes, uh, the legendary bass and, corner and, right and here. And feel free to chime in. Uh, because we come from the same era, um, you know, we were all in the right place at the right time, and and everybody had a dream because L.A. W- had changed, and 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 everybody loved Van Halen, and 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 that Van Halen record changed L.A. and 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 I give them credit for that. Doesn't matter what what rock and roll genre you you were into, it it changed L.A. And, and growing up in the area that we were in, the San Gabriel Valley, El Sereno, you know, Pasadena, that whole area, that band inspired an entire generation of kids to, to strike out and live a dream. And I can honestly say that is the truth because I didn't know anything about the dream until... The kids at El Sereno Junior High turned me on to Van Halen and were telling me, oh, my God, we're going to make it. We're, we're going to be we're doing this. We're, this is. And I just was like, I want in. I didn't know where I was going in life. I knew I loved music. But but all of a sudden, kids are, are putting dreams into my head that you can do this. You just got to fucking do it. And were you already you were already playing bass no, at the time? No, I, I was I was I was a kid in a class, and and this kid Ronnie was behind me, 
And he, he used to fill me with these dreams. He was the guitar player. Oh, yeah, I play guitar, man. I play in a band, and, and you got to meet my friends, and, and we, you know, Van Halen this and Van Halen that, and we're going to make it. You want to be in our band? And, you know, and I was just like, fuck yeah, <laughs> you know? And, and, and yeah. we were literally walking from class to class when I, when I became a rocker, you know? And I was instantly from, from history class a biology class or whatever i became a rock singer that's great just like that you want to be our singer fuck yeah and i was a singer i went home to dad hey dad i'm a singer <laughs> done i was in you know and and you know the rest is is history but it's not history you know but we we followed a uh an amazing you know genre and and an amazing era and and the energy was incredible and so we just you can only go with it and then we started meeting all the kids who were older and the kids in the high school they ended up becoming the band armored saint we all grew up together we all grew up in a very small loving circle and we all just raged together and the rest is history no no matter where we went you know and and we had the best of times. It was the beginning of the 80s. It was fueled by alcohol, drugs, sex, raging rock and roll. I mean, you, you, you couldn't, how can you not want to be a part of it as opposed to all the other circles and clicks are you kidding me send me yeah i want to go there yeah so take me there real quick so how what tell me about the band name how what is mx yeah sorry what that was the first question yeah no 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 not no it wasn't it, mx that's the second question i was talking about how MX how the band was, actually formed yeah yeah that's so great mx was uh you know it was the reagan era it was the 80s uh the mx missile was uh, i'm looking at an mx on this uh behringer euro rack yeah, yeah, the four MX. channel, yeah. Um, it was the 80s, and, and it was Reaganomics, and it was the MX Missile, and it was fucking, you know, just that whole, you know, we voted for Reagan. I voted for Reagan. I mean, go figure, you know, and, and, and so that's yeah, how, how, you know, how, and, how, and so. How long ago was that? Um, I started thirty well, years. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, my yeah. my concept wait, wait, wait. for MX started in 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 high school, so that must have been eighty two, eighty three, yeah. and then we we uh, we graduated in eighty four, and and that's when I approached Mitch Rellis. Well, Mitch Rellis and Danny and I were jamming for a while before that, but it was the 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 end of high school for me when I said it's time to put a band together. So I went to the guys and and uh, to Danny. He was already in Abattoir, and so he was unavailable, even though we were, you know, he was my drummer. It was all good. Um, so I started piecing the band together after high school. But Mitch Rellis and, and Lee Kaiser were at South Pass High School, and they still had high school to complete. So Mitch said, we'll form the band, but I have to graduate first. <laughs> So they graduated, and, and we started, we formed the band. You know, Lee Kaiser came about. He was one of the kids in the neighborhood who was always partying with us. Amazing, amazing human being. And we were doing a Motorhead song in, in, uh, in Joto's garage, and he wanted to sing it. And no, he's like, no I want to sing it. We ended up uh, covering no class or whatever, right? We didn't, we did, uh, we did. No, we never did no class. We did the hammer. We did, uh, of course, Ace of Spades. Uh, we did uh, uh, stay, uh, clean. stay clean. Stay clean. Thank you. you. Go. There you but go. it was the hammer that that uh, that Lee. He just came. I want to sing this. I, you know, we were all hammered in in the, uh, the no pun intended. And and he's like, I want to sing this song. And he came up and belted it out. Fuck. And and that's when I we, I pulled Mitch's. I'm like, dude, this guy, he's our singer. We don't need to go nowhere. And, and uh, he was just, you know, a kid from South Pass. And, and uh, we pulled him in and, and, um, and, we, and we, put, we, we started rolling. We started playing our first shows without Danny. We had this kid from El Sereno, this kid, Sam Menares. This guy was, was Keith Moon to the, to the max. He played a four-piece kit, little four or five-piece kit. His snare rolls were 
were made, fucking made it sound like a like, oh like my a, like god 20 piece yeah, it, yeah. It, it, and so you know when with that said we played the whiskey our first show was the whiskey wow um we it was a pre-sale show no prob we took the contract um and we did a very smart thing we threw a, a kegger party before the show and that's when our click that's when we we caught on you know what it's better to throw a b- before party because there's always going to be an after party. But if you throw a before party and if you buy a keg of beer and you get everybody shit face and then you sell them a bunch of tickets, guess what? And so... Um, <laughs> they oh can't my, drive. That's they, what's they, so well. well, they they showed up. You know, that was the 80s. Everybody drove, unfortunately. Yeah, Knock yeah, on wood. Yeah, yeah, Knock yeah. on wood. But uh, the genius there's no, move, there's no yeah. wood here, though. That's genius. Yeah. That's and and, um, and so we, we played that show, and we were just like, where is everybody? Fucking A. We just fucking got them all hammered, and now they're not here. <laughs> oh, no. They showed up. Boy, did they show up. And, and, um, did and they it throw was, up, too, and show up? No, nah, man. Okay. Hell no. After, okay. they did, I'm sure. Okay. I hope I did. <laughs> and, and so, uh, uh, but, but, uh, but that was it. You know, I mean, we just, we, we started throwing parties because growing up in the, and in, in, in the, the circle that we were in, we were already throwing raging parties. But MX Machine and MX, it, it, we started for, as always a dream that I had in high school. But we were, all, we were MX. And then we got signed. You know, after when, when we got signed, we... No, wait, wait, don't back up real quick. Yeah. How did you get signed? Um, well, honestly, uh, the song Fuck the Neighbors... That's a great song. We, we did a That's demo. A great song, and, dude. And, and, um, and, and it got circulated, and, and we had that demo, and Sharon Murley from Restless Enigma Records was at the Whiskey Show, and she saw us, and, and, and Fuck the Neighbors, which was such a obnoxious, drunken, rebellious song that, that it was just, you know... Is there was, a true story behind this song? There is. Well, oh. well I mean, just... We needed to. We wanted to write a song called "Fuck the Neighbors" because of all the parties we always used to throw. Okay, so it wasn't like "Fuck the Neighbors" are complaining about the noise. Fuck no, them. not not because that's what I got. Because I asked, I asked you. Didn't I ask you? Where I was like, I want to ask him if there's a story behind "Fuck the Neighbors." Not a not a major story, except the fact that every we we were partying weekly. We we threw parties every every night, weeknight, weekends. We, I didn't, I didn't, my ninth grade year, I didn't even attend. I was too busy having fun, uh, you know, and, and because of these amazing people grade year. That we, you know, yeah, see, I mean, we all go through that. And, that that's and, my 28th year right yeah. now. <laughs> but, but uh, the funny thing is, is that when we got signed, we were, we were ready to cut the record when we got some really disturbing news from our record label. And that was uh, a band from Georgia uh, got in touch with with the label, and they were called MX. Now that's a great band too, though. If I'm, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, don't his name was Radical Ray Terrell, and and uh, I never met the gentleman. I don't really know too much about the music, um, but the story is that we didn't know what to do because we were stuck. We were signed. The album was about to drop, and and they owned the name. Wow. So, so we thought hard and we thought fast and I came up with a plan and I'm sorry, Radical Ray, uh, but we said to them through our lawyers, if we were to change our name, can we go on with MX if we altered it a little bit? And he responded with, uh, well, let me, let me hear what the band sounds like. So... I was like, no problem. We called the rehearsal uh, when we were rehearsing at Vernon, mm-hmm. back at Francisco, Francisco Studios, Studios yeah. uh, where we were holed up. And, and okay, all right, they want to hear what we sound like? No problem. We spent an evening writing three ridiculous punk shit songs. One of them I remember called Hold Your Fire. And, and uh, we tracked them on, a, on an old school cassette player and and um we we tried to write the shittiest music we could (laughs) that wasn't mx because you know jokingly and we sent it to them and 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 we said this is what we sound like this is the band that's signed 
and and can we add machine to the to the name and he agreed and and um he he released the uh the 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 permission and we came out and we changed the name to mx machine and that's and and so mx machine was was the manic panic we were mx before Manic Panic. I think MX Machine's a better name. I do too. Me. I like it. Me. You know, MX was, uh, there were a couple, there was a MX80 from San Francisco, a punk band. There's a one from Brazil. I think the Brazilian Perhaps. one was the one I was right? thinking of. And, and so, and, and, you know, but, but um, it, it did fit. It, 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 it all worked out. So, uh, so that's where we, that's, to answer your first question 15 minutes later. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got the we, actual answer. I want to now. chime in on that really quick. You purposely wrote songs that you wanted this guy to hear so that he would disassociate thinking what? These guys are going they anywhere. They're shit. They suck. They're not yes, going nowhere. so cool. They're signed, but they're not going to go nowhere. And, and, and that was our plot. And it worked. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, and, and, you know, but is the rest history? No. I mean, you know, we, we, uh, we have our, our um, we made amazing uh, business decisions that did not uh, work to our benefit. And and that was you know it's one of the lessons that that I say is uh, well let's get that to know. Let, let's save that for the end if you right? don't mind sure let's go back to the the beautiful beginnings here and we'll fucking you know get fucked up towards the end so manic panic you recorded the album in uh, in eighty seven or eighty eight I believe right um, tell me a little a little bit about the name behind it like how why is it called manic panic. Is it just because you, it's? I know it's named after a song title. I, is that I, the reason for it? It was chosen because of the song title and 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 the fact that we were really, we were we were we were absolute obnoxious, immature drunkards, <laughs> is what we were. How old were and you at this time? I was um, I I was twenty one, coming okay. on twenty one. I was okay. two years out of high school. Okay. Mitch and Lee had just graduated eighty six when we started. We formed in eighty six. Yeah, because I have an interesting story about how. So when I toured through Oklahoma and Texas, I I stopped by a record shop, and I only had enough money to get one record. The vinyl. Vinyl, yeah. Um, my buddy got Coven from uh, Seattle uh, right. with uh, Blessed or uh, Is the Black or whatever. And I picked, as soon as I saw the MX Machine Manic Panic uh, vinyl, I was like, like, this is, yeah, I have to have this. It's a stunning album cover. The artwork not, is phenomenal. No, no, fuck, fuck the album cover. I I'm not love saying it. that. <laughs> I'm saying it because I remember listening to this on oh, my right, set, right. and I was like, yeah, I have, to, I have to check out the rest of this. I like, appreciate I it. It was like, you know, a $10 record or something. And everywhere else, it's like really expensive kind of to buy. But at the time, it was like a $10 record. And I remember I'm like, I have to keep this safe. And the whole tour, it was one of the, it was the record that I was like, like, man, I, I can't get damaged. So as soon as tour ends, um, I take it home and then uh, I did not have a record player. So I bought the vinyl just saying like, yeah, I'm nice. going to get a record player sooner or later. So I want to have this in my collection. And I busted it out with, uh, at the new house or whatever with you. And we were listening to it. And I'm like, this is pretty fucking awesome. Like I'm having fun listening to your record. It was a fun yeah. record, you know. We 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 weren't out to and make up. And so that's up, my story. You know, just I, like, I appreciate well, that. No, that's as, you it know, went nowhere as usual. But you know what? No, no. It, I I it's, know it's going right here where I'm saying that. I appreciate that. And 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 it was. And a I found fun it in record. Oklahoma. I didn't even find it in California. I had to travel to Oklahoma to fucking find it. That's you know. Even that's all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, but, even better. You know that it that it's out there. So, but the that album cover. I Can don't, we talk about see, that? Well, I, I asked him before, and I didn't want to like get into it unless he wanted to get okay. into it. So that's up to him. The, What's behind the, the album cover? I can honestly say that it was a phenomenal work of art by the record label. We didn't have, we, we did not know. We, we went and did the, the photo session in the desert uh, from, from the budget that we had back in the day when you would have an actual record deal. And there was actual, you know, we were blessed with that. And and so we went out to Palm Springs to uh, Mitch's parents. They had a, a beautiful house out there. So we took this photographer with us that the label hired, a woman, and and uh, we spent the night. The night was just another raging party. By the morning time, 
the photographer fucking hated us. <laughs> she hated us. She hated Mitch. She hated Danny. They were so insulting. They were so spot on genuine. And, and it was just another obnoxious weekend. And, and when we did the photo session, it was just, you know, we had that. The, the kid is Lee Kaiser's uh, younger brother. We brought him. And what is his name? If you Corey, know. Corey Kaiser. Corey we Kaiser. called him Coronary Kaiser. <laughs> and and uh, it's amazing how they're all fathers with, with you know, we've all grown yeah. up. Incredible. Yeah. And so, but um, we did the photo session and, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> some of us. Did that come through? Yeah, yeah I, it always comes I, through. I, I heard it. <laughs> Shit always comes through too, man. Yeah, but yeah. I yeah. thought, I didn't think I was talking into the mic. It's because we're in. we've been drinking a little bit. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> no, but um, fun. but it was just a, it was a, a a beautiful piece of artwork. All the little squiggly uh, characters were drawn by Jason Holly. He was our band artist. He did the low. He he designed the logo and all the flyers we used to do. So so uh, that's the gist of the album cover. We did not have a, an actual concept. It was presented to us, and we loved it. It was beautiful artwork. So yeah, because because I I've been reading. On and as I know, as musicians, we don't give a fuck what critics think. We don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks. I had always wondered if you guys were happy with the cover because there's so much shit talking on the cover, of where to where it's like I guess I just didn't get it. To it's not your standard. It's not cover, your standard. No. And it, here's the thing: it's the '80s, so it was a different time as well. So it's like all the little squiggly art characters totally oh no, not represented even, us. I'm not even that. No, yeah, it's no, the, but, it's the but kid on the cover. The kid on the cover. Yeah, people just, don't understand. So I just no, was yeah, wondering. Yeah, yeah, that was just that was Corey. It was just we, we didn't, you know, we just thought let's let's go out and take photos. We didn't have, you know, I don't even remember why we brought Corey. <laughs> <laughs> it was like let's bring the kids. So let's, let's put them on the cover. Hell yeah! You know we, it was just a you know we we just so we were reaching the... out to kids too. You know we were you know we, always always rock and roll. Reach out to the kids. You know and so we don't. I don't you know that's very metal though. Just to be like we we don't really care what's on the album cover. We, what we care is what you're listening. Simple to. Yeah. classic black. And I'm, know? I'm, I guess I'm just wondering like is, is there any. Uh, reason why there's like you know there's a tv with a doll's like right Props. next to it just, nope just well the doll we the doll looks like was, you burned it no nope. he no he had makeup and <laughs> and and um and the cool thing about about motif and and, and oh, i don't there's a name there, for his it name too. was motif and and yeah. danny named him motif and and rest I, in peace. I don't rest in peace and that's a whole different story but, but, um, I want to get into some of that too, but yeah. But but um, but that doll became our mascot. So so not only w he was it was right that he was on the album cover because when we when we would gig, he was with us everywhere. He was on stage with us when we would tour. We would take him when we went on tour with Halloween and we did that. Oh, the Halloween, East Coast, not Halloween. Halloween. Oh, okay. Halloween. Okay. Sorry, with all respect. Um, we did a big East Coast run. I call it big, <laughs> quotation marks. Um, we had an amazing time. Um, we took him. But Jason, he was a part of our, he, he was our artist doll. So the morning of our tour, we were leaving LA and we're like, we forgot Motif. We got to go get Motif. And so we doubled back. We went to Jason's house. We fucking walked into his room. His, his mom and dad opened the door. We're like, we, we came from OT. We went in his bedroom and he was still asleep. We grabbed the doll and we fucking took off. <laughs> and he toured with us. Now, do you still have Motif? Who, who Jason owns? probably does still. Oh, okay. You know, I, hope, I hope he still does. You know, he's I'm a bitching so. little. Yeah, he, he was with us. Bitching little, bitching little, little doll. And so okay, nothing so, other than that. You so know? what? What was the initial recep, uh, re reaction to Manic Panic when it first was released? Because I know you guys did a bunch of hype. Obviously, that K and AC thing. I'm like, okay, th this must be we a had huge good promotion. Band, you know, we had good promotion, but but um, you know, and and we were going places. And I'm very proud to say that we were going places. And and again. We got signed right away, which proves that, that, that we had a show, and I'm very proud of it. And that's why I'm here today, because I, I, I believe the music 
carries on and can still carry on. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun you know, record. They're fun songs. They're fun songs to play. And people forget how to listen to fucking music these it's days. It's simple. It's supposed you know, to be fun, ladies you. and gentlemen. You know, thank you. And so, but... Old or new, it doesn't matter what the fuck when it hey, came man, out. Hey man, music that grooves me moves it's, me. I, it doesn't matter the genre. I come and every if 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 I love a song, I love it. Dude, you know, we were and, about and a lot Herb of people Alper won't like there. like yeah. Herb <laughs> Alpert was in part of my dad's collection. We had Herb Alpert, Tijuana Brass. Yeah. We had the Doors. We had Ravel's Bolero, classical music, everything. Miles you know, Davis, so, I, I, you know, you know all that but shit. but you know, as far as the you know getting back to you know what we were doing and and why we did it it was just you know for 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 the pleasure and just to deliver entertainment you know and and again that's why i i feel it's strong enough at my age now just to keep playing why not what of the course. fuck but you my know? original question so what was yeah, the please. reaction to Thank the you. record yeah um it was good it was amazing. It, okay. it was. It was. We, good, we were having where I guess good, good like throughout like worldwide. No, here's or, why. Here's okay. why because this is the story that 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 needs to be told of of what went wrong with MX Machine, and that is the my fact, floor is yours. I will not yeah, talk. I'm, it, it it's it's simple. Ego can destroy you, and and as as awesome as. And proud as we were, I know we weren't the best band, but we were fucking entertaining and we rocked. You know, we, we, we mocked ourselves, so we created laughter at the same time. But what happened was when we did Manic Panic, the label was ecstatic over us. We weren't that proud of the overall production of the album, but that's a whole different story too. What I'm getting at is that the reception, the label was ready for album number two. And they were ready to throw a hell of a lot of money our way to do that album. But we, our egos got so big that we were like, we're too good for, for restless records, for Enigma. They're spending all their time on all these bands like Striper and Poison and the dead milkmen and all these they're successful we weren't but here we were with these egos you know and and again so we decide we didn't have a manager too see we 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 were we didn't we were still managing ourselves which was not good you know when you know the record business so we didn't even have a manager yet they're ready to make the second album and and instead of Going in humbly and, and being absolute grateful musicians for, for the, the opportunity, we said to ourselves, we're better than this. I want to be on a better label. There's better opportunity for us. So we went to the president of the label and sat in, in front of his desk, just like the Blues Brothers, and... and and no ruler, right? No ruler. Okay. No, I was the one doing the talking. Okay, okay. And we're talking to him, and he thinks we're there to talk about the, the second album. And we went there to ask to be released. And he was, we, we dumbfounded him. And, and, and we proudly walked out of that building without a record deal. And the rest is not history. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so here we are thinking that, that we're going to take over the world because we fucking rule, but you ain't shit without our support. And, 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 and for the next two years, we pretended to be signed. And that's when, that's when Kinko's took over. And that's when we discovered Kinko's. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have an art department anymore at Enigma Records, so so DIY. So you know what I'm saying, and and and. So was that the downfall? That was it. 
That was and 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 so we we continued to to what survive. Con- what was your contract for? If you don't mind me asking, is that we is that- had two records and an option for Beyond. Okay. And 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 do you and liked the, the work that uh, Restless did for you guys? I'm sorry. Did you like the work that the Restless actually? They were did for- they were they were yeah. Why they, would they you had leave? belief because we were fucking idiots. We were uh, we were we lost. Who we lost track of who we were, we lost track of where we came from, we lost track of 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 what we didn't know either. But back in the day, if you had a record deal, that was gold. Exactly. Because Thank if, you. If you, I mean, most uh, bands that's a of, my, of my generation will not understand this, but there was no internet. If you had nope. a record deal, that was what all the bands wanted to be was on a label. Yep. yep. That's the reason and we why, got that. In less Labels. than a year, they they the first two gigs out the door, we were they were they were on us. We could have maybe we could have waited. We went for the first deal out there. Maybe we should have waited, but no, but no. But, but how we, do you know? We it? fucked up. Put put it this: there's no there's that, no that, what uh, if we we fucked up. No, but if you went and for the rest a second is not deal, history. what if there was no second? Deal? There was no. No, they were ready to do the second album. We well, were no, signed. Not, not that. I'm talking about no. with, with the, you know, this is, uh, Restless was the first, but if there right. was a second, there would be no second. You got to take it while, while exactly. it's good. Well, you sure. Know? Did you find that uh, you were then shopping for other labels to go and grab you? And yeah. It yeah. Just yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, but, but when, but other labels, the word gets out. People, Who are these fucking idiots? Who the fuck do they think they are? To label owners and I would say, think this so. Is what they did to yeah. us, and- but we didn't have, but we didn't have numbers to 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 warrant it. It's not like the album was a success. It's not like we were blowing up. We 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 destroyed ourselves, and and in the process, the friendships got destroyed, and and the the integrity, and 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 to me, the word integrity, is is key. And and it takes years to learn what that word means. It takes years you know? to build it up. Too. And it takes build respect and integrity. You could it takes years to build up and, and a second to lose. And and so we lost it. And how long after that do you realize this was a bad call or this was we could have handled it, we could have done it differently, or because when you're young and you're like someone else is gonna pick us up and we're we're a hot item right now. And- uh, for me, ten years later after okay. life went on. Okay. You know, because it was just a great depression and, and you know, everybody has uh you know, everybody has their I was in a band once story. Oh so you know, and, and it things. was and it was you know, Lee Kaiser is um he ran off uh and did his own thing, and he's now a, a, a forest ranger, and he's been up north in Northern California with a, a, a beautiful family. He doesn't look back. I sent him uh, uh, a video of us, uh, that classic video I discovered at the country club. It's all good, you know. That, that but but you know, he's he's uh, they. We've all moved on, but, but at but, the time it's happening though, within those first year or two or whatever, it's still it was very sad. It's still possible that we could get picked up, and mm, so that you're it, holding on to. We that. held on. We held on. We we did the best we could to pretend that we were supported, but without support, you you're you ain't shit. You're you're, you're you just you, all you do is you cut the raft free and it's, you float float yeah. away. It feels like you have this uh, glass chalice and yeah. it's chipped away a little bit at yeah. a time, and, and and we we sealed our own fate. And I tell that to the people and to the kids and to the to 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 whoever wants to learn from our lesson. That's a great point. You know, you Thank don't you don't don't you know don't take anything for granted, especially when people are supporting you, and 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 they've got you know my God, and and so I'm just blessed that I was able to continue on and 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 find a place in in rock and roll for the yeah. for for these years now and but but again we had an, an amazing experience I, I don't i have i have regrets sure of course but but i don't uh, you know this was the, the best time of our lives we and, and nobody will ever can ever deny that those were the best times of our lives you know we did good yeah you know we performed we we delivered but but we mm-hmm. fucked up and kids you know Opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Listen to Eminem. Yeah. But so I guess 
going forward, so you release the record, the great reception, the, all this shit happens. You t- return to real life for a couple decades, and then you come back. I so, came back. So walk me through how that happened, who is still actually in this project at the time. Obviously, we'll, we'll talk to about the Danny situation real quick before we get well, out of Danny here. was always, regardless of whether or not he was playing with me or not, he was always my partner in MX Machine up until now. And, and everything that I did in my life, even beyond MX, I shared with him. And, and um, so throughout the years, he was the only person that I would say, we got to play these songs again. You know, I'm down. But it never transpired. And, and um, in like, I guess it was 2005, six, I, I uh, started to get the bug again because of the, there was a resurgence of, of thrash heavy of th- that well, came of back. Thrash metal from like yeah. I think it was the mid 2000s and, and we dude. caught that we caught well no the the 80 there there was a a bunch of bands started playing in in the clubs again you know with but, during the mid 2000s uh, that's yeah, when the thrashing yeah, was yes. I mean that's what my generation is right. at so and and it, and and I just said to myself you know what again the music is so much fun to play and and we're on we're on this little level of history maybe I could move it up to this level you know, to the next step up, you know, we're never, we're not going to go down in history, but, but my music and, and the music and the legacy, it's worth to put up on this level, you know, and, and just to, to spread the love of, of what we were. And so I went to the guys and I went to every member and I said, I want to put MX back together. May I have your respect and blessings and because i couldn't do it without the blessings of the original members and i wouldn't and so and i said that to danny first and danny was a lawyer he became an attorney so he was very eminent about okay but you better get him you better get get permission from lee and mitch too Mm -hmm. and i said you better believe it danny and and um and so I put the band back together with new players. And 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 that was a that's a whole different story. But but um the the amazing thing about Danny and his integrity and 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 more lessons was that the very first gig I did of the second round of MX I forgot to tell Lee. I didn't I didn't ask him permission yet. And I remember driving to the show, telling Danny, "We're playing, man. We're 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 you know, wish me luck." And he said, "Where were you playing?" I think it was the Brixton in, okay. in Redondo. I think that was our fir- yeah. The Brixton was our our first return, and and I was driving there, and I I remember texting Danny because in the back of my head I knew that I didn't ask Lee yet, and and. And I knew what Danny warned me about. So driving to the show, I called Danny and I said, hey, you know, wish me blah, blah, blah. We're, we're, tonight's the night. And he said to me, did you talk to Lee yet? And I said, nah, man, I, I'm, I'll call him tomorrow. And, and, and I have never seen my brother Danny so seen serious, heard. heard him so serious in my life on the phone saying, you better call Lee and you better get his his permission now before you play or i'm going to slam an injunction on your ass so fucking fast you you won't know what hit you wow you know and 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 i took that very seriously and i pulled over and i called lee and 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 i told him about if it was okay if i continue on to to present the legacy you know, to to now. Uh, why was Lee the last that you called? Did you because forget, he was you... because he was so distant, and ha- he had already moved on in life. He was a for you know ranger gone. Just you know, he he has he he didn't look back, and it was and 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 I had every intention, you know, but but uh, I it just you know, fucking the gig came up and excitement and 
but everything. but I listened to him and I heard him. I said, Danny, I got gotcha. you. I'm gonna call Lee right now, and I'll and I'll get that permission. And Lee obviously gave you permission. Absolutely, he was you know, and you know they they were all you know. I mean, it's it's uh, again you that's know, respect, right? You that's know, integrity right there. You know, I'm I I just you know I I can't do it any other way, you know, because of the because of the integrity issues and the honesty and the character issues that I went through personally running MX Mach the original MX machine, my character declined because I started robbing Peter to pay Paul to keep the band alive. And, and, and then you start lying and then you start fucking, you know, being shady. And, and, and I caught myself and, and I realized I have a lot of growing up to do. And so I was able to Rectify take the, the time, grow up, be the person that I need to be, and then continue on. Now, what was the turning point for you to get there in, in life? Uh, to get to where like you needed to be? Honestly, continuing on in rock and roll and following... You no, know, I'm talking about in life. Uh, that's what I'm telling okay, you. Okay. In, in, in life, and when I say rock and roll, you know, I... I got into staging and 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 you know and and rock and roll show business and and when I first started it was a blessing to jump into gigantic shows and so when I started working the shows as a crew member and and you know my first show was Metallica GNR at the Coliseum Ooh. so so these were big shows I, I I I you know so you learn from from people who are in the business and you see who, who the real people are and who the fake people are. And everywhere in the world and wherever you travel and wherever you go, you find who the real people are. And for me, you know, I was able to discover myself by, by realizing that integrity, honesty, show up on time, don't fuck people over, you know, fucking take care of your, you know, you learn. And, and, and you grow. And, and there are many people I know who have not grown. And these are people from my own, own world. But again, it just takes time for everybody to, to grow individually. Absolutely, man. Real quick, before I let you go, yeah. um, I want to real quick talk about Danny, if you don't mind, for, I don't. A, for a couple minutes. Talk to me, man. What what's what's going on? So in 2017, what went through your head? Oh, uh, Danny was, uh, you know, Danny was he was a pillar to to a circle of people that that extends far beyond MX, far beyond, and 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 he was my pillar as a kid when 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 I was thrust into. El Sereno by a uh, uh, family tragedy, him and, and Ronnie were the first two now who's, kids. Now who is Ron? Ronnie and Danny and I were the, were the, were the three amigos in, in junior high. Okay. And Ronnie was the kid who inspired me to meet all these, these kids. So going back to... Going back to Danny and all that, he was, you know, his character is, is, was just nothing but phenomenal integrity and 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 he went off to become when when we would party and get shit face after rehearsal he was off at law school he was doing his homework and and he went on to become a lawyer but as far as the loss and and the loss for everybody you know it was um put it this way he survived the cancer oh like 10 know. years so, ago so he yeah, was a cancer survivor okay okay and he survived Big time, and and um, and he chose to take that survival and 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 live it up. When when the doctors told him your cancer is coming back, he chose to live it up. And and so with that said, he lived it up. And one day, when uh, when this event happened, I woke up to a, a, a text on a day off. It was my first day off. I had a week off from work. Uh, I, I, work I work long days. So I was looking forward to that week off. 
the very first day I got, I woke up to a text from Danny and I just thought, it's just a text, you know, what's up? You know, what does he got to say? He said, uh, it said, I'm at Huntington Memorial Hospital. I have, a, I have less than a week to live. That's what his text was to me. So, you know, I put on a nice shirt. I took a shower, put on a nice shirt. I went to Huntington Memorial Hospital. I stayed a week with him. And, um, you know, just in, in that week, it was, um, you know, he decided to, to um, he got out of the hospital that, that day and, and I drove him to his home and, and he decided to throw a World Series party because the Dodgers were, were, uh, were rolling. And so that night, 100 people, fucking another Danny Rager. And, and uh, he chose to go out in style. Fuck yeah. And, and um, the, uh, the, the, the hospice that he chose didn't work out that night after the party. So, um, and his oxygen tank drained. So he went back to the hospital that night. It was almost like he went home to throw one last rager for his, for his family and friends. And he did. And, and so the next morning, he was back at, uh, at St. Joseph's, not Huntington. And that's when he chose with his doctors to, uh, to take uh, the doctor-assisted uh, uh, way out. And, and it was approved. So like the champion and, and the pillar he is to, to everybody, he went out like a fucking champion, not a tear, not an emotion, just making sure everybody was taken care of, making sure his mom was okay, making sure everybody can, can settle their differences and, and become one again. That was all Danny wanted. And I was with him when he took his last breath. Now, what is the one thing you took away from um, your friendship with, with Danny? That he took away? That or? you took away from him. Like that, meaning, what did he teach you? Oh, man. Uh, the one thing that you still remember to this day. To be honest, to stand up, you know, to, to, uh, to do what's right and, and, and don't fuck anybody over, you know? And it's not like that's what... You know, again, character issues. You know, we all grow up. We grow up to be who we are. And some people never grow up. You know, some people remain in the hood forever. Oh, and I know at, some of them. You, and he knows who I'm talking about. Oh, okay. You're and, not looking and, at him and, like he's no, in the no, hood. No, I don't know. No, no, he's from the hood. You kidding me? <laughs> yeah, hey, man, the, if you're from the hood, you're real. But, but you know. It's yeah, amazing, but, but it's getting out of the hood. But hey, whatever. it's amazing how somebody crosses over, and a lot of people maybe they just they they go the straight and narrow, or it changes their whole outlook on life, on how short it is, and how you have to appreciate whether it's yeah. this tonight or it's yeah. you know, what I, you're doing with I, your I've kids definitely and learned your family. That, you know? and, Absolutely, you know. And and Danny and I weren't the closest, you know, during the last uh, years. We were like this, fingers crossed together, brothers, but we weren't, we weren't travel. you know, he had his traveling buddies, he had, you know, he had a very close circle, but he was my family and we always kept in touch. And the, 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 the major, uh, how do you say it, the, the, the emptiness in me is that I have nobody now to... Just shoot Tech shit stupid with. shit. Every stu all the stupid shit that would come my way from the guys at work or look at the, you know, I would always send it to, hey, dude, check this out. This is stupid. Watch this. Look at this. And, you know, I mean, just, you know, we always kept in touch. And, and, uh, but as far as who he was a, as a, as a human being beyond MX, you know, my God, you know, just phenomenal, phenomenal person. And, and and he's in me forever. You know, he will always be in me. Every day I think about him. Every day, you know, I I I I uh, I make sure that that uh, that he's remembered. Absolutely. We've well, had two. We've had two toy drives. We 
we've had th two toy drives and three gigs, and we're going to do another toy drive for him. So we're going to continue on. So don't you think he would be proud of you for the stuff that you're doing? I know he's that? looking down on me because yeah. I'm doing everything I can yeah. to, to continue on what he put in me. And I know for a fact he's looking down on me going, he knows I'm trying everything I can to. And you're performing again. and I'm Trying my best. It's tough. You know, it's a tough market out there, you know, especially L.A. It's a tough market. Absolutely. And, and, and so, you know, I have to pick my battles wisely for MX Machine, for the legacy of the music. I cannot go back. I can only go forward. Well, the pickings that you have done so far, tell me the pickings. Tell me what shows are you playing there's we had a couple shows booked, but we're we're still we're we're, we're there's nothing. New record. We have a uh, we have an amazing recording that we've been doing with Manny Nietos. He's our producer. I can honestly say, as far as an LA producer, top notch. LA Analog. producer. Why don't you say producer? What's the difference between an LA producer and a producer? You have an absolute point there because he's produced all over the world. He spent years in China. He's an absolute amazing producer. I say LA because. He's L.A. Yeah. and and he's he's in a band There's called the Chavez stigma. Ravine. There's just there a stigma is. with L.A. So but, I'm like, but he's, what's the difference? Here? I, I get it, but 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 there's also but he's he comes from our world, but as a producer now, he is his art brings in clients from every genre of music. Love it. And and so and he is he's so deeply entrenched in L.A. that his band is called Chavez Ravine. Wow. He's L.A. So, you so, know, so well, you, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end it on that happy note. Um, thank you thank very you. much, Diego. Yeah. Really appreciate, I appreciate the, fucking, you guys. the the yeah. hour plus that you gave uh, for this you. interview. I appreciate and, it. Um, I wish you the best of luck to MX Machine. Thank hopefully you. Madras and likewise. Can, yeah, we're, hopefully let's, Madras can play with, let's play, with the legends. Let's play, let's play, man. Fucking Sherman Jones, I mean, dude, Angelo, Heretic, there, you know? Insecticide. Hey, man, honestly. That needs to be a show. That, you know, well, we hey, did we a show. Let's make that happen. We, let's make that happen, dude. Let's I'm make, serious, dude. Let's make it happen again. Old school meets new school, man. It always happens. We, you know? we, we did it once, and and I wanted and the reason why we're not we have we had shows booked, but they got to be the right ones exactly. with the right lineup, with the right... You know, they have to be strong. Hey, can I get in there Abs real quick? Absolutely. Sherman, Sherman come Sherman on. Wants to Sarah talk. There, Sarah there. He wants to talk so, some shit. I was he, actually. Nobody can hear what you're saying. You got to talk into the mic. I right? was actually at that Brixton show. The guy has the fastest right hand you'll ever see. But anyways, um, it says it, James Hetfield. Yeah, it must. It was a uh, 2012. Uh, Gimme and I wanted to do some shows We've always done some shows under our belt And Gimme came up with his idea And we do something called the Metal Summit And I was like, alright, I oh, like yeah, that. I remember that I remember that 2012 Prophecia, Heretic, MX Machine, Insecticide uh, 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 Euphoric Defi Defiment And just a gangload of other local bands And these two guys were there Awesome show. Yeah, but I need to be a part of this, so we need to make another one. We'll get another one. All Madras, right. MX down. Machine, Heretic, Ninth Circle, Insecticide, and we'll find some openers. Let's fucking I do it. I am down. Too.